you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Bears, bears. This is the 80s show on iHeartRadio. Funkhauser brought it to my attention when I came in this morning that uh, a bunch of expletives that would get me fired from my gig in radio uh, was basically what he'd come to accept as being his version of good morning, how are you? And it got me thinking. Yeah, I'm a cranky son of a bitch. And I asked Funkhauser, I was like, well, does it bother you? Does it upset you? Does it bring you down? And he's like, no, no, I I understand where it's coming from and don't take it all that seriously or or something like that. And it got me thinking, got me thinking a little bit because (laughs) me cursing up a storm in the morning, if you knew what was leading up to it, you would find it to be totally acceptable and understandable. I've got a lot to curse up a storm about a lot of mornings. Now, it's acceptable, but does it make it right? Well, look, am I doing any real damage here? Not really, but there's probably more pleasant ways I could start the day for Funkhauser. There's probably more pleasant ways that I could start the day for myself. Rather than coming in here cursing up a storm, being like, I can't freaking believe it. I'm going to leave someone, a, a, someone's going to be a steaming blood stain on the carpet after I'm done with them. Blah, blah, blah. It, it, it's, it's my standard rhetoric and my standard narrative by which I live. And look, obviously, I'm not going to reduce anyone to a blood stain. Actually, HR frowns on that. But it got me thinking that Funkhauser went, oh, that's your standard greeting in the morning. I was like, mm. And while I know it's not doing any real damage, I feel like I could do better. But I've got this laundry list of reasons that I can, should, and will be cursing up a storm. And it got me thinking. All those reasons to be in a crappy mood are completely and utterly legitimate. It's absolutely okay to feel angered, upset, cranky, whenever the hell the world wrongs you. And you know what? The world being what it is, it's going to wrong you on a regular basis. But if I want to start the day on a bit of a better foot, maybe I should try not to do that. Maybe I should try and uh, always look on the bright freaking side of life or say it with a smile or whatever the hell those cheerful people always do that makes me want to reduce them to a steaming blood stain. Whatever the case may be, come to realize that the way I conduct myself, regardless of external factors, and the way you conduct yourself regardless of external factors, whether that be the guy that cut you off in traffic this morning to the fact that your mom or dad beat you viciously or didn't even hug you enough, or you had a teacher that molested you, or whatever the case may be, everybody's got stuff. Everybody's got mitigating circumstances to them being a jackwad most of the time. Everybody's got plenty of reasons why they can legitimately go through life extraordinarily angry. But does that but does but does that make it the right thing to do? I'm guessing for the most part no. No it doesn't. And it's a small thing and I'm sure there's lots of larger things I could do, but I'm going to try not cursing up a storm every single morning when I come in here because ultimately look, whether it's how you conduct yourself in your place of work, Or the state of your life. People want to blame their problems on the government. People want to blame them on an elected official. If you're looking to somebody else, whether it be your mom, your dad, a teacher, if you're looking to any anything or anyone external to blame your problems on, eh, you might be legit, but it's not going to get you very far, is it? Ultimately, it all comes down to us. All comes down to you. You wake up and you decide to write your own story that day. You wake up and you decide to be the captain of your own ship that day. You wake up and you decide how your day is going to go. Not anyone else. Not any of those other people. Not any of those other people that can shoulder the blame for everything that's wrong in your life. Nope. It's you. It's all down to you. And it's down to me. And it's down to us to make changes and differences in our own lives. 
if you could kick the person in the pants responsible for most of your trouble, you wouldn't sit down for a month. Theodore Roosevelt. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us, being part of our radio family. Tweet super producer to the stars. Super tolerant producer to the stars, Barry Funkhauser at Funk FM. You can tweet me at ADSXE. Today in the show, ooh, yeah, not looking so freaking great for Keith Olbermann, is it? No, no, it's not. Why? Well, he was the captain of his own ship, and he steered it directly into shark-infested waters. He tried to go up against a bunch of college students at the game of social media. Yeah, Oh, when a guy beating the crap out of his 50s tries to match wits with a bunch of millennials in that particular arena, he's going to lose and he's losing big. And you know what? He deserves to lose big in this particular instance because he's a freaking idiot. We'll get into that a little later on in the show right now, though, Funkhauser. A, how are you? B, what's going on in the world? I'm all right. All right. I'm all right, I guess. I I saw something on the internet that, uh, because I have like a 15, 16-year-old dog. And I saw something on the internet that just, you know, made me made me cry about about oh. dogs passing on. Oh. And so I've been in. I, I went through a wormhole on the internet, and now I've just been a wreck for oh. like a half hour. Oh, all God. these poems and stuff, and it's just like you know, because I I know like my pup is a couple years. He's got a couple years on him, and mm. until it's over. So it's like, you know, it's retirement for the for the puppy, and mm. I've just been a mess. Yeah, that stuff's hard to take, man. It really, really is. Like, there's no easy. Let me ask you this: Did you come across in your in this in this internet wormhole that you went down with regard to the loss of dogs or pets? Did you come across the Rainbow Bridge? The Rainbow Bridge? No, no. Th- that poem? That. Oh my god. Oh my God! Can't even I can't even talk about it right now, or it's game over. We're gonna spend the next forty five <laughs> minutes crying, and it, it just it won't work. But you know, I say this now rather than uh, uh, rather than at, at a later date. Dogs, I think, come into our lives to teach us about love. My dog Buddy, I, I didn't think I I don't think I fully understood how to give and receive love until I had my dog Bud. And it was so difficult when he passed away. And I think dogs come into our lives to treat us about love, uh, to teach us about love. And when they leave their, leave our lives, they're teaching us about loss. And even though they're not there anymore, when they're gone, in teaching us about loss, even though they're not there anymore... They're still making us stronger, better people. Even when they're not there, they're still managing to be there. Not in the way we want, but they're still managing to be there and be our best friend and improve the quality of our life even when they're gone. So, yeah, that was... Uh, that's, that's, woo, yeah. Sorry to bum you out, too, but... Yeah, yeah. All I do is curse. You talk about uh, <laughs> a dog's life being finite. Uh, I've got like a 14-year-old puppy, too. That's, Sheesh. Uh, and you get into these, oh, it's awful. You're like, you know, they're doing great at age 14 or whatever. And you're like, ah, oh, they're going to be one of those dogs that makes it to 27. You know, and it's just like, oh. anyways. Anyway. Hmm. What's going on in the world? You want some <clears throat> nudes? Here's, here comes some nudes. Nudes? Uh, uh, oh, sorry, news. Uh, news. 17-year-old <laughs> Kylie Jenner uh-huh. bought a $2.7 million mansion. Wow. Well, thank God. <laughs> I'm starting to worry that the terrorists were running out of reasons to hate us. 17 years old. Kim Kardashian's kid sister buys a $3 million mansion. Nice to hear she's being rewarded for a lifetime of hard work. <sighs> she's a terrorist to me. She's right. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know which one she is. Doesn't like, matter. I know there's, yeah. Like, uh, there's two of them, right? Two junior skanks? Yeah. Uh, I think so. I don't know. I uh, don't know. Anywho, is it like uh, she's seventeen? How old is her? Like the other young sister? I don't know, but is anybody it, it, who has is, the it, it, the power to close down streets and stuff just because they want to go shopping yeah. is uh, a terrorist to me. I mean, isn't it? It's Kendall and Kylie, isn't that the two yeah. younger ones? Are either of them? You know what creeps me out about them, and what's. Uh, creeped me out in the past about these sort of things. Do you remember when the Olsen twins were going to turn 18? 
Yeah, there and was, was like, like countdown count- clock. There yeah. Was, yeah, there was a count. I was like, oh my god, this is so skeevy. It's gross. And like, there's like these girls are underage, and there's all these, all, there's all this talk of, uh, there's all this talk of them. You know, like, oh, did she get a boob job? Let's look at her boobs. It's like she's seventeen. That's really creepy. The entirety of America and all media outlets. What shame on you? It like grosses me out. Now, do I think they're uh, absolutely reproachable, abhorrent little pustules of <laughs> abhorrent little pustules of symbols of America's fail? Yes, yes, I do. I don't think they're good people, but like, God. Quit creeping me out, America. Stop objectifying these chicks and, like, counting down the moments till they're 18. It really is, ah, oh, it's gnarly as hell. It bothers me. It, it legitimately bothers me. Funkhauser, does it bother yeah. you too? Mm, yeah, gross. yeah, yeah. Like, I just uh, found out that uh, I was watching Independence Day last night, uh-huh. or the night before. Yeah. You know the little girl in Independence Day? She grew up to be uh, in Arrested Development, I think. No, 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 Parenthood. She's a girl in Parenthood. Okay. And I was like, "Oh, that uh, that changes my perspective a little bit because, like, you know, she's a, she's kind of a hottie. Oh, she's in that mm-hmm. movie Duff. You know, I, yeah, it's coming I don't out, watch movies so much. Yeah, time, man, time is weird. Uh, uh. Yeah, it, it's. It, it. I had a moment where I was like creeped out by myself not so long ago because it was like. And then I was creeped out by America's media because it was like, hey, check out this chick. You know, look how busty she is. Who do you think these enormous cans belong to? <laughs> and uh, I was like, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Clickety click, click, click. And it was like the younger daughter on uh, Modern Family. Happy like 18th the one, birthday. The, the one that plays the, uh, the, the one that plays um, the nerdy younger sister on, on uh, what, what's that? Modern Family. Do you know who I'm talking I, about? I don't watch it, so. But I, I don't think know, so. but she, but she's like, you know, I, I, pretty sure she's like 16 or something like that, or 17 tops, and and uh, I was like, look how she's learned to rock her new womanly curves, and I was like, you're basically saying to all of America, and, and this was like People Magazine online or one of the, it was like a respected ish media outlet being like, see how she's learned how to rock her new curves. It was like, hey everybody, come and think pervy thoughts about this 16 year old kid, and they totally baited you into it because it was like, who do you think these rocking curves belong to? Click a 16. Year old girl, unclean, unclean. Oh, God. It's freaking revolting. Now, here's the thing in England, 16, totally legal to do that, but it doesn't stop it from being creepy over here. That's the age Weird. over there, 16? 16. There was, a, there was a girl. There was a girl, and I remember because I'm like younger than her. And uh, by about like, I, I'm younger than her by about like three or four years, I think. But and she came over here and went on Howard Stern once. She was really famous. Her name was Lindsay Dawn McKenzie. And she's straight up done porn now. She went into porn. And, uh, but when I was a kid in England, there were, these, uh, there were these newspapers that had page three girls on them. Page three girls are naked chicks. And there was like, this girl appeared in the magazine and basically like doing a hand bra situation. And the headline was like, she's only 15. She's already, you know... 30 F cans or something like that. And when she's 16, we'll show you her nipples. <laughs> it's just oh, like, geez. oh, yeah. And it, like 16 and it was legal. And she started being naked um, in newspapers at age 16 because that's a legal age in England. But it was just like we live in an age. We live in an age of violence against women and children. And this newspaper decides to put bait for that. <laughs> on the cover of a mag uh, of a newspaper. Hey, uh, what do you think that newspaper was? Uh, the Sun. It was the Sun. Do you know who uh, runs the Sun? Uh, is it that dude from Virgin? Uh, no. no. I don't know that. Rupert. Oh, is it Rupert? The, yeah, there's Rupert <laughs> Murdoch. <laughs> In England, Rupert Murdoch, back in the uh, 80s or 90s or whenever it was, was. Uh, Ill- <laughs> Was saying, "Hey, let's. Uh, it's it's legally acceptable in this country. Let's put a 15 year old girl naked on the cover of a newspaper with her hands covering up her nipples, and then promise when she's 16, you get to see them." Uh.
Boy, dreams remembering to be Saturdays. Man, those were the good old days. Now, all 